Well, I've only got good news for you tonight. I believe we're living in the greatest time, the greatest dispensation. I believe the greatest generation is alive on planet Earth, and that is you. For the first time, seven generations are alive on planet Earth simultaneously. And I'm here to tell you tonight, I don't care if you're on 90, you, it's not your time to retire, it's your time to refire. Whether you are 17, this is your moment and this is your time. And I'm going to talk to you again about your potential, your future, your dream and your tomorrow. I believe that the best is yet to come. I believe the greatest doctors are yet to become doctors. The greatest preachers are yet to grace the platforms. The greatest rugby players, the greatest soccer players. Come on, Bafana, Bafana. Anybody who supports Bafana, Bafana, they need all the help they can get. Say amen. The best netball players, the best Yuxka spillers, the best trompet blasters. Ek is net bezig om jou aandag te kry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Marcel, proud of you, man. Go, 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 you good thing. And uh, Opa there in Bloemfontein, uh, you know, we are so proud of our young people. That's why we lay our lives down for this cause, because we believe in the next generation, and we are believing in the next, next generation. When we started this youth revival many years ago in Bloemfontein, I was criticized by many people, because a lot of people weren't comfortable with all these young people. But you realize in South Africa, 70% of our population is under the age of 28. So if God's going to move, where's God going to move? He's going to move among the young people. And I'm one of them. I'm under the age of 85. Come on, just give a cheer because you feel young and the Lord is near. Hallelujah. Don't forget Dream Week. Have you registered for Dream Week? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One conference, two cities. A story is told about an eagle who thought he was a chicken. When the eagle was very small, he fell from the safety of his nest. A chicken farmer felled the eagle, brought him to the farm, and raised him to be a chicken among many other chickens. The eagle grew up doing what chickens do, living like a chicken, acting like a chicken, believing he was a chicken. A naturalist came along, to the chicken farm to see if he had heard about an eagle acting like a chicken, if it was really true. He knew that an eagle is king of the sky. He was surprised to see the eagle strutting around the chicken coop. The farmer explained to the naturalist that this bird was no longer an eagle. He was now a chicken because he had been trained to be a chicken. He believed he was a chicken and he could not change the fact that he was a chicken. The naturalist knew that there was more to this great bird than his actions showed as he pretended to be a chicken. He was born to be an eagle. Come on somebody. He had the heart of an eagle and nothing could ever change that. The man lifted the eagle onto the fence around the chicken coop and said, Eagle! Thou art an eagle, stretch forth thy wings and fly. The eagle moved slightly only to look at the man. Then he glanced down at his home among the chickens in the chicken coop where he was comfortable. He jumped off the fence and continued doing what chickens do. The farmer was satisfied. Well, I told you, he is a chicken. He was born in Lady Brand and he will never leave Lady Brand. Hallelujah. The naturalist returned the next day and tried again to confirm the, convince the farmer and the eagle that the eagle was born to something greater. He took the eagle to the top of the farmhouse and spoke to him. Eagle, thou art an eagle. Thou dost belong in the sky and not down here on the earth. Stretch forth thy wings and fly. The large bird looked at the man, then again down into the chicken curb. He jumped from the man's arms onto the roof of the farmhouse. Knowing what the eagle really was all about, the naturalist asked the farmer to let him try one more time. This preacher is going to try one more time to activate the faith of somebody in this place, to say the same thing to you. Thou art not a chicken. Thou art an eagle. Stop acting like a chicken. Stop struggling like a chicken or a tur turkey. And spread thy wings and fly. He would return the next day, as I do every week, and prove that this bird was an eagle. The farmer, convinced otherwise, said, it is a chicken. 
The naturalist returned the next morning to the chicken farm, took the chicken to the, from the, and the, took the eagle and the farmer some distance away to the foot of a high mountain. They could not see the farm nor the chicken coop from the new setting. The man held the eagle on his arm and pointed high into the sky where the bright sun was beckoning above. He spoke, Eagle, thou art an eagle. Thou dost belong to the sky and not to the earth. Stretch forth thy wings and fly this time tonight. The eagle heard. The eagle stared skywards into the bright sun, straightened his large body, stretched out his massive wings. His wings moved slowly at first, then surely powerfully with a mighty screech of an eagle. He flew and he became what he was meant to be. Somebody give the Lord a praise and say, I'm an eagle. Come on, come on, come on. Stop cluck, 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 clucking, cluck, 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 clucking. Cook, cook, cooking like a turkey. Thou art an eagle. Thou art born to be an eagle. Thou art meant to soar above the circumstances of life. Thou art meant to be great. Thou art born for greatness. Thou art born to be everything God called you to be. Your chicken coop, maybe your background, maybe your culture, maybe your parents' opinion, maybe a teacher's opinion. Tonight, there is a naturalist called a pastor, a man of God looking you in the eye one more time, sitting there in the East Rand, sitting there in Bloemfontein, in Cape Town, in Stellenbosch, in Kimberley, looking you in the eye there in Johannesburg, saying, Thou art an eagle, spread for thy wings, and fly, soar into the destiny that God has for you. Come on, Shout amen. Every eagle in this place, give the Lord a praise because I'm going to take you somewhere tonight. I believe that you are going to fly places where you never flew. I believe distant horizons are waiting for people. I'm going to prophesy to somebody. I believe great things are ahead of you. I believe this generation is the generation that will bring the move of God to this planet Earth. I believe we are the people. You are the chosen one. In spite of your past, you have a great future, a great tomorrow in the name of Jesus. For thou art an eagle created in the image of your creator, created in the image of God himself, made to be fruitful and to multiply. He does not matter the color of your skin. Skin. He does not matter your background. He does not matter your social status. What matters tonight is that you realize and you believe that you are an eagle. You are created in His image and you are born to fly. Oh, come on, Pretoria. Come on, Bloemfontein. Make the turkey mad next to you and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm tired of dead old religion. I left the chicken coop long ago. Boring, dead, mundane Christianity that conforms people to average, to mundane living, that steals the dreams from the hearts of people, telling them what cannot be done. I'm here to tell you what can be done. I'm here to tell you what is deposited on the inside of you. I'm here to tell you that God is on your side, that God is for you, that your dreams are authentic. Your dreams come from God and you can go and be a world changer. You can go and be a history maker. You can go and be a game changer for thou art an eagle and not a turkey. You can break records. People say no one could run the mile in under four minutes and people did. Today it's the standard. You are a limit breaker. An obstacle remover. There's a giant living on the inside of you. His name is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Nothing shall be impossible to you if you believe it. Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why I was born. This eagle forgot why he was created and lived like a chicken. I meet a lot of eagles that live like chickens. A lot of eagles that chicken out in the race of life. A lot of people that take the path of least resistance. A lot of people that settle for second best. A lot of people who lose their dreams because it's easier to cluck, cluck, cluck and to nitpick in the small affairs of life while God has called you to be a giant in your generation, to be a trend setter in your generation, to be a history maker in your generation. I'm telling you again, it doesn't matter in which 
coop you were born. You were born in the image of God. You were created in the likeness of God and you were meant to fly. My brother and my sister, come on, shout amen. The moment you doubt your identity, you will never believe that you have a great destiny because your destiny is tied up in your identity. In Daniel 11, 32, the Bible says, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. In John 14, 12, Jesus said, most assuredly, most definitely, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these, because I go to the Father. How many of you believe you're going to do greater works? <sighs> greater works in the ministry, greater works in the sports arena, greater works in the medical profession, greater works in the entertainment industry. So that's what Jesus said, most assuredly. You can count on it, you can bank on it. You will work greater things for God. You're gonna do things, I'm talking to somebody tonight, things that I never thought was possible. Yes, your preacher. You're gonna go places that I never thought was possible. But you gotta dream, eagle. You gotta believe, eagle. You gotta believe that you can break barriers, eagle. And I have to stop living in the safe place of average eagle. Because if you hang out with the turkeys, you will act like a turkey. If you hang out with the chickens, you will pick around like the chickens. If you hang out with people going nowhere, you will find yourself going nowhere as well. If you want to soar, you better connect with some people that are soaring. You better connect with some people that have a greater vision than you. Say amen tonight in Jesus' name. A young man in the Bible, Gideon by name in verse 11 of Judges chapter 6. Well-known story and you've heard this before, but you're going to hear it again and again and again until you believe that you're an eagle. Until you act like an eagle. Until you soar like an eagle. Verse 11, the Bible says, The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which, which was in opera, which belonged to Joaz the Abysrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Come on, tell the person that next to you. The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. If it's a woman, say mighty woman of valor. Come on, tell the person again, the Lord is with you, mighty man. Come on, call them a mighty man. Say you're a mighty man. The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all these miracles which our fathers told us about saying, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. The Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours. Bum the person next to you and say, there's something special in you. Come on, tell that person there's something only you can do. Come on, tell that person there's something powerful about you. There's something special about you. Come on, preacher, preach, 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 preacher. Come on, Bloemfontein. Tell that person you're a history maker. Come on, tell that person greatness dwells on the inside of you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We should talk good things over one another and not pull one another down. We should tell one another what we can do and not what we cannot do. Come on, we should be one another's fans. God is your biggest fan. The Lord says, the Lord is with you. Go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to the Lord, oh my Lord, how can I? Save Israel. How can I be a great rugby player? How can I be a great businessman? How can I be a great evangelist? How can I? How can I? Why is it that the first thing when God gives an instruction is that we doubt ourselves, that we underplay ourselves, devalue ourselves, undermine ourselves? Think like a chicken while God is calling you to spread your wings and fly. I'll tell you why. Because you've been sitting in the wrong coop for too long. You've been sitting in the wrong place too long. You've been believing the, the same life for too long. You've seen yourself the wrong way for too long. You've not seen yourself through the eyes of God. Today, I'm gonna press against your nose and I wanna tell you, thou art an eagle. The sky is the limit. Thou can go places that you never dreamed possible because the Holy Spirit will take you. Oh, come on in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. The Lord is with you, mighty man. Go in this might of yours. Oh my Lord, how can I? I'm the weakest of the least. I never came first in class. I never won the beauty competition. I don't even know who my father was. People said I'm an accident. I never made the team. 
How can I? You can because God says you are an eagle. Spread forth your wings. God says, I destined you. I created you. I placed you on this earth at this time. You may be sitting in the chicken coop, but I'm going to get a hold of you and I'm going to lift you up to be that mighty man of destiny and you will spread your wings and you will fly and fulfill the destiny that I called you to have. Gideon makes excuse upon excuse. I bump into so many people that make excuses. We should go for preparation. We should go for training. But surely we can flap our wings where we are because the wings we have is not a fashion adornment. It is not a fashion accessory. It is not to strut around and say, look at my marvelous wings. Those me wings were meant for flying as your feet are meant for walking. My brother and my sister, Jesus walks with the walkers. He doesn't sit with the sitters. He runs with the runners. He does not camp with the campers. Come on. He soars with those who become like eagles. You will not find Jesus in the safety of comfort and mediocrity. You will find Him when you jump off the perch, when you jump off the edge of the boat and you spread your wings and you fly, believing that God is with you, believing that God will keep you, believing that God will never fail you. Exactly as God said to Gideon, I am with you. He says, how can I, God? I, my clan is the weakest. I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you. Gideon didn't think much about himself. Well, some people think too much of themselves, but I think most people think too little of themselves. We need a good Christ image. We need a good identity image. Because if we don't know why God created us and what we were meant to be in the beginning, we will always struggle like turkeys. Ons gaan altyd rons krop soos hoeners. Met die hoener mentaliteit. Dan maak ons mense die hoeners in. so dat ons hoenervleis kry. So volgende keer as jy sê, die heilige geest raak my en ek kry hoenerkruis, ach hoenervleis, sê eerder ek kry arendvleis, want jy is nie hoener nie, kom aan in Jesus naam, sê halleluja, kom aan in Jesus naam. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. God says to get in, you're a mighty man, you are an eagle, you were born to fly. You were born to make a different maker, difference maker. Gideon, this is your time for greatness. This is your time to be great in God. This is your time to attempt great things for God. You are not meant to be average. You are not meant to fit in. You are not meant to be beige. For average is nothing but the top of the bottom. God wants you to be at the top. God wants you to be the head and not the tail. You may start at the bottom, but your vision needs to be for the top so that you can climb that ladder in life and be who God called you to be. Don't try too hard to fit in. You were born to stand out. You're not yet to roll over. You are yet to take over for God. You are not yet to sit and suck your thumb in the wine press feeling sorry for yourself. You are not yet to nurse and curse and rehearse the setbacks that life dealt for you. Neither are you here to look for a reason not to do what God called you. A reason for failure. An excuse like Gideon who said, I am the least and I am the weakest. God says, no, 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 no. I don't see you like a turkey. I don't see you like a chicken. I see you how I created you to be. A mighty man of valor. A mighty woman of God. A woman who can make her be a world changer. Come on. You can be the difference maker. Come on. In that hostel. In that university. You can be the game changer on that rugby field. Because it's in you. The game changer lives on the inside of you. I'm going to shout at you tonight until you get it. Until somebody gets it. Until somebody spreads their wings in God and begin to soar and fly to new heights for God in Jesus' name. And not sit there with all your reasons why you fail, no matter what the preacher preaches, no matter what the naturalist said to the eagle. Every time when he was left, he jumped back to the chicken coop. I've preached the same message for 20 years. I've seen many turn from turkeys to eagles, but I've seen many choose to remain turkeys. Choose to believe I'm a turkey. Look in the mirror and see a turkey. I saw a beautiful picture the other day of a little cat, kitty cat, looking into the mirror. And in the mirror was 
a huge face of a male lion. And I said, that's me. Because when I look into the mirror, I look into the mirror of the Word. I look into the mirror of my identity, that I'm a new creation in Christ, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, come on, Pretoria in the name of Jesus. Come on, Bloemfontein, Johannesburg. Imagine what you can do if you walk with God and believe that all things are possible. Anything is possible. The moment you doubt whether you can fly, you cease forever to be able to do it. So stop acting like a turkey. Stop hanging out with the turkeys. Stop hanging out with the doubters and the naysayers and those who tell you what cannot be done. Find some eagles and connect thyself to some eagles so that you can again become the eagle God called you to be. There's a saying, you can't fly with eagles when you keep walking with turkeys. I've learned in my life as I progressed, I had to cut relationships with some turkeys. Not I don't love them, but I'm not going back there. And I'm not being dishonorable today, but sometimes the chicken coop is the house that we come from. <laughs> sometimes the chicken coop is the culture we come out of. Because we were trained to be chickens. We were trained not to expect too much. We were trained not to get our hopes high. We were trained not to believe that the impossible is possible. Don't allow turkeys to decide your destiny. And don't go home tonight, young person, and tell your dad you're a turkey. Amen. Don't ever do that. What he's forgotten, you still have to discover. Say amen. Come on. <laughs> but you're a new generation. You have to walk differently. You have to believe God for great things. Without being dishonorable, you have to spread your wings and fly. Every negative word you have has the potential to scribble its way unto your subconscious. Least, weakest, not able. Fly with the eagles. Keep company with the eagles. Keep company with people who know what it takes to make dreams come true. People who are positive. Gideon, you were meant to fly. Gideon, you are an eagle. You are not a turkey. So spread your wings and fly. Get out of the comfort of your boat. Answer the call. Be great in God. Start where you are at and watch how your life will progress as you always think like an eagle, as you soar like an eagle. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, The Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country and from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I believe this is a word for many people in this place. I'm not saying leave your wife or leave your local church. I'm saying to you, there are new distant horizons that God is calling many of us to. Come on. God is going to send some of you to Europe to change countries in Europe. God's going to raise some of you to be the biggest business players that have ever walked in churches in South Africa. Oh, come on. It's a good time to say amen. Hallelujah. God says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So he says, I'll take a nobody and turn that nobody into a somebody. I will turn that 16-year-old girl that became pregnant, that doesn't have a husband, I will turn her into a world shaker. I will give meaning to her life. When people give up on you, I'm not a God who gives up on you because I created you. I made you. No matter how many setbacks you've had, I will help you to have a great comeback. I will turn your mess into a great message, your test into a great testimony. As long as you believe you are an eagle, nothing is impossible. I can soar on the currents of the Holy Ghost. I'm an eagle. It's a word for many of you tonight. It's time to get out. Time to get out of your yesterday. Time to get out of your disappointment. Time to get out of your negative identity. Time to get out of your small-mindedness. Abraham, get out of your family. Get out of your country. Get out of your comfort zone so that I can show myself strong on your behalf. Leave the past behind. Get out of your excuses. Get out of your comfort. Get out from under that shadow of guilt and shame. Get out from settling for average. Get out from every restriction. Get out of the land of bondage. Get out of that relationship. Get out of that low self-esteem. Eagle, thou art an eagle. The sky is thy home. Lift thy head. 
spread your wings and fly into the destiny that God has for you. If you believe it, say amen. Come on, give Him a little bit of a praise. Hallelujah. 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 I believe many of you need to discover your wings. And many of you are going to be pushed by God out of the nest. Because you're sitting getting fat and lazy. And until you don't get out of the nest, you're never going to know what you can do. I talk to people and my children know this. When I tell them God's called you to do something or do something, when they start giving me an excuse, I said, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. Don't tell me what you can't do. Tell me what you can do. Don't tell me what is not possible. Tell me what is possible. Don't tell me where you cannot go. Tell me where you can go. Don't tell me, uh, talk about other people's failures. I've got too many success stories. Don't talk about your impossibilities. I can talk about too many possibilities. Things people said cannot be done. Somewhere something is going to trigger in the heart of some young man, some young woman who actually believe what that preacher says is truth and I'm not going to sit in the nest any longer. Hallelujah. I'm going to spread my wings and I'm going to fly in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how people see you as long as you don't see yourself the way people see you. So stop doubting who you are. Stop doubting what you have. Stop doubting what you can do. Stop looking at other people's wings and begin to celebrate your wings, your strengths, your talents, your abilities. You've got wings. You've got something that's beautiful, that's powerful, that is special about you. No one was born a failure. The first race you swam, you won, my brother and my sister. You came into this world a winner. God wants you to live on this earth as a winner. An eagle, an eagle, an eagle. Free up above vision, strength, power, ability. Never stooping down to those low places again. I'm an eagle. Oh, people may say you're a turkey. doesn't matter. Proverbs 23 verse 7, the Bible says, As a man thinketh, so is he. What do you think about yourself? What do you say about yourself? Gideon quickly had to change his confession and his self-belief to believe what God said for him to get out of that wine press. I am a mighty man. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The greater one lives on the inside of me. But his first reaction was like so many people because of a negative mindset programmed to be a chicken. I hear what you say, pastor, but it's easy for you to talk. You've lost touch with reality. You're a pastor. We're out in the real world and God, let's not even talk about God. He's in heavens. He has lost touch with the interest rates and the petrol prices. How can God expect us to do anything? Can He not see the giants and the adversity? After all, I have to leave my nest Leave my home. What guarantee do I have other than a promise? No guarantee in the midst of a storm. A promise, Abraham, to leave your father's house into the unknown, taking a risk for an awesome God, believing that God was with you, being, choosing to be an eagle, never allowing conformity, Never allowing the pressure of your environment and your friends and people around you who are filled with unbelief, doubt and cynicism to mold you into becoming an eagle again. That's the amazing thing. When you become an eagle, all the turkeys become uncomfortable and they aim their clucking at you, which is called criticism, to pull you down to their level. Of course, they know in their hearts they are also meant to fly. And rather than deal with the reason and the issue why they are not flying, they want to point a finger and say, well, it's easy for him. Well, maybe he's smuggling diamonds or, or you know, uh, he's got the unfair advantage, etc., etc. Cluck, 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 cluck. And you feel good with all your clucking, Right? No, because he does not witness with your spirit. He does not witness with your heart. You may not get the first prize at school, but it doesn't mean there's not something great in you. I mean, in the natural, Gideon was the least. 
Maybe when they wrestled as children, he always was the one that was bullied. Maybe he was the fat one at school. Maybe she was the ugly duckling, but now she's a beautiful swan, but nobody told her. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Have you seen how you have changed by the power of the glory of God? A beautiful swan, but you still think, I'm just an ugly duckling. And all those thoughts you have are keeping you from the destiny that God has for you. All the excuses that you have on a piece of paper, a blank space in your mind where you justify average and justify why you are where you are. All those excuses will keep you exactly where you are. I've tried, it's not working. I've given my best, it's not working. I don't have enough training. I am not able. All God says is, thou art an eagle. I am with you. I will teach you. I will walk with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Follow my voice. Follow my will. Follow my word. And stop devaluing yourself and seeing yourself through the pen that you come from. The chicken coop. See yourself through your father's eyes. Who says, you are an eagle. You are a mighty man. You are beautiful, David, fearfully and wonderfully made. That's how I created you. This is your time, Abraham. This is your time, Gideon, to get out of your country, to get out of your past, to be the eagle that I called you to be. Laugh at yourself, but don't ever aim your doubt at yourself. Be bold. When you embark for strange places, don't leave any of yourself safely on the shore. Have the nerve to go into unexplored territory. Nothing splendid has ever been achieved except by those listeners who dared believe that something inside of them was superior to circumstances. I will not back down. I'm not rolling over. I'm not staying down. I'm getting up because the greater one is on the inside of me. You may knock me down, but you're not going to knock me out. Oh, come on. In the name of Jesus, I may not know what the future holds, but I know my God holds the future and it's a good future. Hallelujah. You may sideline me, but you cannot stop me. You may come against me, but you cannot curse me. Because God is for me. And I believe I'm an eagle. I believe these wings are meant for flying. I'm going to go where God called me to go. A second person in the Bible. Very quickly, the Bible is filled with characters. People like you and me who had amazing destiny. And the call of God was upon them. Most of them were disconnected from the call. Disconnected from their destiny. Because of failure, because of self-doubt, because of guilt. Most in the Bible. The story we read about these heroes in the Bible were normal people like you and me. Peter, a fisherman who ran away, who denied Jesus after his encounter with Jesus. He becomes this amazing apostle when Jesus restores him. So sometimes we see weaknesses in the flesh. We see our frailty. We wrestle with our doubts and our fears. That doesn't mean that greatness is not in you. For everyone in the Bible had their doubts and their insecurities and their fears. But God came and sent Jesus to call each and every one of them out of their boat, out of their insecurity, out of their low self-esteem, out of to see themselves the way God saw them so that destiny could begin. Not conformed to this world, but transformed, Romans 12, 2, by the renewing of their minds. Moses, a great man of God, the greatest deliverer that Israel ever had, wandering aimlessly in the wilderness for 40 years. Around the same bush again and again like a turkey. Bound by failure. Bound by low self-esteem. Because he preempted the will of God. Thank God He never gives up on us. Thank God He's a God of a second chance. Thank God He's a God of a new beginning. Thank God He believes in us until the day we breathe out our last breath for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. So maybe you're a little bit behind schedule, but I have good news for you. God will get you on schedule. So he comes to Moses in Exodus chapter 3 verse 7. The Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people in e Egypt. Oh, Europe. I mean, when I was in London, now God triggered me for Europe. Listen to me. As a move, CRCI announced it to South Africa that we are going to do great works for God in Europe. Europe, 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 East and Western Europe. We are, are calling. Many of you don't know, God spoke to me in 1985. 
We are now in 2014. God spoke to me about Europe, that I will send missionaries into Europe, into foreign countries. And when I was in London now, again, God spoke to me and said, this is the time. We have an amazing church of thousands and thousands of people in London and in other parts, in Germany, a small church, in different places. But God told me, this is our time. This is our time. God's going to use Africa. God's going to use South Africa. God's going to use people that have been raised up and we're going to go back. Come on. Many of you are going to go back to the countries of your ancestors. You wonder why you're studying to be an engineer. You wonder why you're studying to be a doctor. You know why? wonder why you're studying. You feel the call of God upon your life. You don't know why you're studying because that degree is going to be your meal ticket. That degree is going to be your avenue to go into the dark places, to go into places for God. Oh, come on. In the name of Jesus, I want to preach to someone tonight. Hallelujah. I believe we can change our world. We weren't born to get fat and lazy. We're not here to get goosebump upon goosebump, to run from church to church, grasshopper. Get planted. Get in the local church. Get under authority. Get raised up for the King of Kings. Get raised up for the glory of God. Put your roots down in a church somewhere. Become a part of a mighty move of God in Jesus' name. Stop running with the turkeys. Stop clucking with the cluckers. Whatever that is. I know what that is. I don't like that church. They're too loud. Well, let's go here. I don't like him. His shirt is too bright. Let's go there. Well, I don't like this. Three years later. And you're full of your opinions and you're worthless as spit. You don't even use your spit to close an envelope because they've got sticky tape on it. I don't agree. I don't see. Clink, 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 clink. Say you and your three friends. How are you going to change the world? The last words of Jesus was going to all the world. What's wrong with you? You're sitting sucking your thumb. What's wrong with you? And some of you literally are sucking your thumbs. You're 16. Sucking marijuana. Cool, bro. Uh, cool. Cool, bro. Cool. I know. Peace, man. Peace. Peace. Let's go party. I mean, I, uh, you know, I bumped into some people that were unsaved when I was unsaved. They're in their 40s and they still run to clubs. Still go play with 21-year-olds and 22-year-olds. He slap, man. You need a slap up the side of your head. You need somebody to slap you. Slap some sense into you. Get some attention in the name of Jesus so that you can realize it's time to grow up. It's time to get up. It's time to go up in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, some eagle in this place. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, what kind of Christianity is this weak Christianity? Little bit of bad weather, you can't get out of the bed, but Jesus rose from the dead. I don't feel like going to church. I, 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 I don't feel like giving my money. I don't feel, I don't feel. Feelings, feelings, feelings. How pitiful. Those feelings will keep you where you don't want to be. God's not asking you about your feeling. God's calling you to be great in Him. To leave yourself behind so you can be someone that will make a difference in this world. Live for a purpose greater than yourself. So God comes to Moses. He says, I've seen the oppression of my people. I've come down to deliver them out of the land of all the Egyptians. I've come to bring them into the promised land. Verse 9, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. I've also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you 
I mean, Moses is minding his own business. God says, come here, I have need of you. Peter was minding his own business, fishing. He had his destiny planned out. Jesus said, come and follow me. I'm going to make you into something great. You're going to be a history maker for me. God has got all the right in the world to call you, to, to, to ask you, to, to, to demand your resources, to ask you for your money, to ask you for your attention. He created you. He has all the right in the world to ask you for your time, your talent, and your treasure. And He will not sit and negotiate with you. He made you for His glory. Never forget it, my brother. And when God blesses, you get full of yourself. It seems that some people can only serve God in the land of difficulty. Because when they get in the palace, they forget why God blessed them. So God comes to Moses. God says, come and I will send you. Are you listening to me? You are the one God wants to use. You may not have much going for you right now, but you are the one. Listen to me. Young man, they're in Bloemfontein. They're in Johannesburg, down there in Cape Town. You are the one. Yes, the person next to you, but you stop ducking. And sit up. And receive these words from this preacher. You are the one. You are the mighty one that God is calling at this time. You, you who are comfortable. God says, You are the one that will go back to the university. You are the one that I will put in the rugby team for my glory. You are the one I'm going to use among professionals. You are the one I'm going to raise up to do great and mighty things for me. You are the one. Not the other, but you. God says, come and I will send you that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses says, who am I? Yeah, we go again. Identity. Your destiny tied up in your identity. Who am I? I don't have much going for me that I should go. God says, I will certainly be with you. Verse 13, Moses said to God, but God, who are you? What is your name? What shall I say? Verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. That's your ticket. God told me, but you better know it's God. If God said it, God will keep you. If God said it, God will lead you. You better know it is God. And you better know today that God has a dream for you. God has a vision for you. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will come and give dreams to old men and visions to young men and young women. You all fit in that category. All seven generations. You either young or old. God says under 60, you young. Over 60, you are old. Middle age is 60. All of you have a purpose. Stop strutting, clocking like a chicken. Amen. Eagles. Eagles. I is moog for 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 hunters. I is die hunter in. For hier die hunters. Wat kies om om my te skrop, 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 skrop. Skrop, skrop. Oh, dat is moeilijk. Dat is niet moeilijk nie. Ik kan niet zien nie. Ik weet niet hoe nie. Ik heb mijn best probeer. Skrop, skrop, skrop. Probeer dan weer. Probeer nog een keer. In Jesus' naam, probeer tot jy oorwin, tot jy slaag. Ach, kom aan in Jesus' naam, iemand, sê amen in Jesus' naam. Halleluja. Jou lewe leef voor jou. Hou op klaar. Stop complaining. Get over yourself. Get up. Get on. Being an eagle for God. Moses, who am I? God, who are you? God, I don't have what it takes. In Exodus 4 verse 10, I'm almost finished. He says, oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. I'm slow of speech, slow of tongue. Here he goes again, just like Gideon, telling God why I cannot fulfill his destiny. God says in verse number 12, Exodus 4, I will be with you. That's enough. And I will teach you 
what you shall say. Hallelujah. I've seen it from the day I left Bloemfontein to go to Lady Brand. All I knew was God said, go. I went. And as I went, God was there. He taught me what to say. He taught me what to do. And God was with me every step of the way. When I went to Bloemfontein, all I had was God said, go. And I did not say no. I said, yes, Lord. And I went. I spread my wings in Jesus' name. When people said it cannot be done, I said, I don't listen to people. I listen to God because God said the things that are impossible with men are possible with God, for with God all things are possible. Spread your wings and fly. Fly. Fly into the distant horizons that God has for you. Fly into the great things that God has for you. Fly, eagle, fly. God is with you. And God will teach you in that business. God will teach you in that church. God will teach you. Moses does the right thing. I'm almost finished. Sit down for a minute. He goes back to his father-in-law. This is very important. Because he was under the authority of his father-in-law. He just not, he didn't just leave. We say in the ministry, some people are sent, other people went. Some people buy a microphone and they go. Other people get the blessing of the house. I've always received the blessing of leadership. Moses is called by God and he goes back to his father-in-law And he says, the Lord told me to do something. And his father-in-law blesses him. It's very important, this. Extremely important. You don't just want to go out there without the blessing of spiritual leadership. Leadership is there for your protection. Leadership is there to guide you, to teach you, to mentor you. You cannot learn to fly if you do not sit with people that have flown where you are supposed to go. Many people, I don't know what it is. I think it's a small man syndrome. That small people don't like big people. So they want to go and reinvent everything themselves. No. God gives you leaders. God gives you a church. God gives you a nest, not a chicken coop, an eagle's nest, which is called the local church. And there God places you, and there God plants you, and there God raises you up, and there God teaches you to fly. In Jesus' name. So how are we going to develop these wings, these fashion accessories? Number one, you're going to start flapping your wing in the nest. That's why I told you, you have to get planted in the local church. You have to get planted, young man, if you're going to fulfill your destiny. Young girl, you have to get planted. If it's not this church, you have to get planted in some church, somewhere, where your leader is a visionary, an eagle, that dreams about distant horizons so that you can go to those distant horizons. You have to be planted in something bigger than yourself. Or you'll remain a turkey. And you know, no turkey thinks there's anything wrong with him. Because he clucks like other turkeys. Many people go nowhere and they think it's fine. And that's fine for them. I'm just not a chicken. And I'm not comfortable on the ground with chickens. Amen. So you have to start flapping your nest, ach, your wings. That means you need to get involved in your local church. You need to report to be for duty. Thank you. You need to report to be a homesa leader, to be a musician in the nest. Before God will send you from the nest, God will test you in the nest. You serve the nest. You serve the vision of the nest. I'm getting a lot of amens now. So I'll stay here. Because you ain't flying if you're not in a nest. You're not going to fly. You may take off, but you're going to crash. Are you listening to me, young person? Many people get inspired and then they go self-destruct. You want the blessing of the house that God plants you in. I'm not trying to be popular now. I'm telling you how you were lost. Because a lot of people are lost that were doing great things for God 30 years ago when I got saved. They're nowhere today. I don't want you to be another statistic. Great dreams and imploding or self-destructing. The number one reason I can give you are people who left the nest. People who disconnected from the nest. 
the local church. People who were not part of the nest. For you to be an eagle, you need to be born into the nest. You need to be fed in the nest and you need to be taught to fly from the nest. So, you must serve in the nest. You must observe in the nest. If you want to be a great musician, then watch the great musicians on the platform and begin to develop your gift and come join the choir. You have to serve in the house. Because the purpose of your wings is to build the house of God. Your, the purpose of your wings is to bring glory for God's kingdom. So whether you're the greatest rugby player, you need to be in the house. You need to spread your wings from the house. Come on, say amen and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. You need to learn to share in the nest. You need to support the nest, the vision, the leadership, and the other eagles. There are eagles in the making. Amen. Number two, how to spread your wings. Number one, start flapping in the nest. Number two, start taking short flights and come back to the nest. So for a businessman, that would be, you go do your business exploit, Sunday you're back in the house. Not Sunday you're on the golf course because you will lose your strength somewhere. You get back to the nest. You're not out of church every second week. You're committed to the church if you want to be an eagle. We're not talking about loose Christianity. Yeah. Everybody just doing what they want. That will lead nowhere. The local church, they were eagles. They turned their world upside down because they worked together like this. Moved as one. Commit it. Support it. Submit it. Commit it. Submit it to one another. Commit it. Submit it. A word people hate today, commit it. I love you, but I don't want to marry you. I love this church, but I don't want to be a member here. Why? Uh, maybe it's going to cost me something. You better believe when you marry that girl, it's going to cost you, Jackie Chan. You better believe it's going to cost you. You can't just have the sex and no responsibility. You pay the bill, then you get the sex. Say amen. Commitment. I want to change the world. But I'm just going to go from church to church to church to church. I'm just going to, I'm just going to run where, where there's a speaker, where there's a blessing. You ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. Nowhere in a hurry. Because you have to be taught. You have to catch certain things so that you can become someone God can use. Make spiritual sense. I'm not talking to the goofball that's not under authority. I'm talking to people that want to fulfill destiny. I've always learned wherever God's working, you always get goofballs. They just bounce around. Goofy. Goofy. They have their goofy doctrine, their goofy philosophy, ah, their goofy ways, their goofy, goofy. No, God says, be planted. Put your roots down. Serve. Spread your wings. An eagle, when thou art blessed, when thou art blessed, because I've got many people in our ministry that started with me working for people, and many of them in Bloemfontein that's been with me for many, many years are now worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions. Many, not one. Many, 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 many. Who have never left the nest. But many have left the nest as soon as they got a little bit of success. Woo, look at me. Look at my enemy wings. I did it all by myself. Oh, did you birth yourself? Did you raise yourself? Did you feed yourself? Did you forget where you were born? Did you forget? Are you listening to me? We're talking about a generation that will do it differently. Not this independent, charismatic generation that never get planted in a house anywhere. We're talking about a different generation. People who are committed. You don't see eagles fighting with one another, do you? No. They fly together. You keep your... Oh, turkeys fight with one another. They scrap about everything. 
So if you're somebody scrapping all the time, gossiping all the time, you are a turkey. Thou art a turkey. Chicken. I don't like this. And you know, I've got my own dream and I've got my own vision and I've got this and me, myself, me, I, 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 Ach kom, bemoedig my en geef my aan een klap daar, so wat fout met julle. Jy wil nie klap nie, want jy weet ek praat die waarheid. Jy wil nie klap nie, want jy weet ek praat die waarheid. Want al wat jy doen is jy kraai, kraai, kraai. Jou naam is Marai. Al te fraai. Is jy bezig om nonsens te saai. Hi. <laughs> Together we do more. Together we'll go much further. Together we will change our world for God. Together. Black and white, young and old, male and female, together united under the Lordship of Jesus. Come on, together we will do more for the glory of God. Come on, somebody shout together in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Baby eagles begin learning to fly a process referred to as fledging when they are only about two or three months old. Usually this process takes a couple of months. During the learning process, many of the eagles fall to the ground and some are hurt and even die. Eagle parents will often continue to feed and care for the baby eagles that have fallen to the ground until the babies learn. By four to six months, all young eagles should be flying unsupervised. While the eagles will stay close to the nest, while they are learning to fly, once they've mastered the process, they will fly to their distant horizons. I ask you, in the name of Jesus to become everything God called you to be to stop looking at yourself as a chicken turkey thou art an eagle thou art born to fly thou art born to soar to the distant horizons that God has for you. Fly, eagle, fly. Spread thy wings and fly. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. He will teach you. He will lead you by the way you should go. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving in this place. Thank you, God, that you believe in us like no one else. Thank you, God, that you have great plans and purposes for our lives. Thank you, God, that you loved us so much you sent Jesus to die for us. I pray for people in this place, in all our churches that are self-destructing, people that are walking away from you, people that have forsaken the call of God upon their lives. People like Moses wandering aimlessly. People like Peter that have wandered away from you. People like the prodigal son that have left their father's house. Tonight, God, you are in this place. You are calling from the heavens. You are reaching out to your people. You are knocking on human hearts tonight. Thank you that you are a merciful God. Thank you that you are a faithful God. Thank you that you are a loving God. Thank you that you have destined us to be just like you in this world. Tonight, there are things you are calling people out of. Tonight, there are things people you are, you are calling people away from. You are calling people to get out.